And now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropic Weather Bulletin for September the 17th. Well, today across the wide world of tropics, we have one active tropical cyclone, that being Tropical Storm Chanthu in the Western Pacific by Japan and South Korea, and we have the remnants of Nicholas just meandering in southern Louisiana tonight. We also have several areas of interest, in particular in the Atlantic Basin. But let's get right into that. On day 260 of 2021, we've had 67 storms form this year. That is unfortunately likely to rise by a few more digits uh, over the next few days. On day 109 of hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, we have uh, two invests with high chances, those being 95 and 96L. 96L is looking pretty good, 95L not so much, and another tropical wave that's come off of Africa today has a low chance of formation interest in the Cabo Verde Islands should monitor the progress of that tropical wave. On day 125 of Pacific hurricane season, no storms are active and no areas of interest are active. In the Western Pacific, Shanthu is up on the top of your screen there by Japan and South Korea. That's going to make its way through Japan, bringing some tropical storm conditions there. And a new area of interest that we've marked in the South China Sea has a 20% chance of formation more towards the latter part of the five-day period, as models are depicting a tropical cyclone potentially forming there um, and then tracking westwards towards Vietnam. In the Indian Ocean after 95B, it's fairly quiet here. The monsoonal activity is really taking over once again. No storms and no areas of interest are active. And the uh, southern hemisphere is all quiet. Uh, no areas of interest here for the time being. And I can tell you that we have started progress on the southern hemisphere animations once again. So we will hopefully get those out by the end of the month. As we get towards the satellite imagery, you can see if you look on the eastern side of your screen, you can see at the beginning there's some dry air coming off with that tropical wave with a 20% chance. That may be the main inhibiting factor for that wave, although 20% chance still that it forms. 95L is looking pretty poor right now, although that thunderstorm activity is increasing, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. And uh, off the east coast, you can see the broad spin of 96L. If it increases thunderstorm activity, we could be seeing this one get designated as a tropical cyclone fairly soon over the Gulf Stream. And you can see the remnants of Nicholas just sitting there over southern Louisiana. As we go towards the eastern Pacific, it's fairly quiet here. We've got some general thunderstorm activity along the ocean, uh, well south of Hawaii and well south of Mexico. We do have a couple uh, bursts of thunderstorms in the uh, uh, Mexican region and in Guatemala as well. In the Western Pacific, you can see Tropical Storm Shanthu there. Looks like its center is becoming a bit exposed there uh, in the visible frames. Nonetheless, still a fairly significant storm. You can see some general thunderstorm activity in the Philippine Sea, getting through the Philippines into the South China Sea. Um, again, we're going to be monitoring that area for potential tropical cyclone formation into the latter part of the five-day period. And then in the Indian Ocean, we can see the general monsoonal activity, as I mentioned earlier, taking over uh, after 95B came through. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we've got that general thunderstorm activity towards the equatorial region. No real signs of tropical cyclone formation at this time in the Southern Hemisphere. I see the temperatures for the Eastern Pacific. It's piping hot, ready for a storm to form uh, near Mexico and a bit further out to sea as well. Um, in the northern Atlantic, it's piping hot and ready for all of our systems out there. The main inhibiting factor, like I said, for the system coming off of Africa is going to be that dry air. And in the Indian Ocean, we've got generally warm sea surface temperatures ready for uh, not potentially another area of interest if one were to form. And in the Western Pacific, it's piping hot, ready for more storms potentially later in the month and later into the season. The sea surface temperature anomalies, we can look towards the Atlantic Basin and see the track still from Larry. Um, that's, about, that's rebounding a bit. And we've seen some uh, cooling in the Gulf of Mexico, particularly in the central and parts of the, of the western Gulf of Mexico from Nicholas, although those are likely to rebound fairly quickly. Looks like the sea surface temperatures are already rebounding from Olaf in the eastern Pacific. But it's generally uh, really splotchy there of above to near to below average sea surface temperatures. In the Western Pacific, we're seeing potentially some signs of uh, co uh, cooling from 
uh, Shanthu, east of Taiwan and, and through the southern Japanese islands. No real dent that I can see there from Shanthu as it was east of Luzon. But in the South China Sea, you can see that uh, blue area uh, that, that is from Kansen as it stalled off the coast of Vietnam. And in the uh, Indian Ocean, it's actually getting a bit less above average, more towards average uh, in some larger spots in the Bay of Bengal. And the Southern Hemisphere is generally above average, and that is going to now be warming as we approach the seasons down there. As we move on to the On This Day section provided by Cyclone History on Twitter, we're looking towards 1990 for On This Day. Typhoon Flow was approaching the southern Japanese islands as a Category 4. A powerful typhoon, was a super typhoon at one point in its lifetime, would go on to impact uh, many areas in the southern Japanese islands, uh, portions of South Korea and Japan. We also had Typhoon Ed in the South China Sea. Tropical Storm Isidore, which would soon turn extra tropical on this day. Norbert was coming off its hurricane peak in the eastern Pacific, and Marie was passing south of Hawaii as a hurricane would soon weaken below tropical storm status uh, later in the uh, week um, after the 17th. Well, as we look towards the naming lists, the Atlantic has calmed down a bit. Although it's still possible we see some storms, the next two names are Odette and Peter. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names are Pam Pamela, followed by Rick. In the Central Pacific, it shouldn't be any surprise that the next name is still Hone. We're still waiting for Iona. In the Western Pacific, after our little spree of storms there, we're looking out for Dianmu, followed by Mandul. In the North Indian Ocean, we missed our chance for Gulab. And it doesn't look like we're going to be getting that or Shaheen anytime soon in the North Indian Ocean as that monsoonal activity takes over. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we're approaching the seasons here quickly, I will say. About a month and a half away. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Patty, followed by Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Batsarai. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody, followed by Dovi. Thank you so much for watching this Tropical Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.